just opening the cabbage tunnel for the first time. Looks like we got some cabbage in here, but we're gonna clean up the area around it. Out of the 18 cabbage that I put in here, only 12 have survived. So they're coming. The uh, Napa cabbages are coming the best, seems like. So we'll see. Okay, cabbage tunnels weeded. I sprinkled a little DE on the leaves. I did find a caterpillar in here. I planted, uh, this cabbage was actually a second cabbage that was growing in the cell at the same time that we put these in. You see how far behind it is because it was in a pot. These all look really good. I don't love that these leaves are laying on the ground like that, but these round cabbages, that's kind of what they do. And then the water pools in there and then they start to rot. So this is the time of year that we need to keep an eye on that. And some of these Napa cabbages are getting really close to being ready. It's not tight yet though. Uh, I think this is broccolinis, two broccolinis and the Brussels sprouts. You can see the tiny Brussels starting in there. So awesome. Glenn's weeding uh, carrots. This is our second planting of carrots. Um, and we put, I put tall grass in there when I, when, after we seeded it. And it's making, of course, now it's time to come off. Some of the carrots are sp pretty spindly. So we're gonna take it off. It's pretty hot right now, but if I keep it watered, they should be okay. Ah, oh, corn patch is finally coming along, though it's getting its head on it. It's kind of young, I think. It's only two feet tall, two and a half. Uh, it survived a lot. It survived all that wind damage, and then gophers were eating it, and it got hailed on. <laughs> so it's, it's doing pretty well, considering. The potato patch is looking awesome. We've started having some it doesn't even have to flower before you can get baby potatoes, but we've started having a bit. Um, my first garden box is coming out this coming week in earnest. And uh, I'm excited. There'll be carrots and onions and peas and maybe a few small beets and potatoes in there. A bunch of herbs. I only sprinkler water this small patch of corn. Uh, I have a weeping hose for this long row. 100 feet so and then I hand water the squash making sure that I give it a good deep water sorry about the uh, mower noises but who am I to stop somebody from working right I was just looking in here yesterday and through the bug netting I saw some broccolinis so Glenn's gonna open it for me and we're gonna cut them off. Let's see. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful they are. So the broccolinis don't just, they don't form a head. They just form little broccolis that you just cut off and I think they keep regrowing. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. I've never been good at growing broccoli, but here we are. That was our row of potatoes in the garden before we got the garden patch worked. I'm gonna be putting out my first garden box this week. It's late, but uh, it's it was cold early in the season and stuff took so long to grow. I got some peas to put in there. Those are green shelling peas. They're our peas. We've grown our own peas. We've saved the seed for like four years now, so. We should name them. What do you think we should name our peas? If you got an idea, put it in the comments. Name our peas. This is um, sugar snap peas, the kind where you eat the whole pod. And really, I mean, a person, you could harvest these younger and just eat them like that too, no problem. So we'll put some of those in the garden box. And then some carrots. Oh man, boy, did we ever find some nice carrots in there. I'm excited. We opened up the cabbage tunnel, as you saw, and uh, here's our second planting of carrots. Hopefully we have enough carrots to take us into uh, save for fall. The beans are gonna start blooming. Got 
some little buds on there. Everything's looking a little flat. That's kind of normal. I put uh, sweet potato vines in this little hill here that I grew from a store-bought sweet potato and one that we saved from last year. And I know y'all have been probably eating zucchini, but got first zucchini coming here and that one's gonna be mine. Sorry guys. I'm pulling out um, the lettuce from the original bed. The chickens are getting it, it's done now. I am growing these head lettuce and that one feels like it's, I don't think they're probably gonna get super tight, but they look good. I don't think I'll put those ones in the boxes because I had straw in the garden and the straw blew into the leaves as these things were making layers. <laughs> Next plantings of uh, beets and Swiss chard down here. Looking great. Gonna get a drink tonight. I haven't been watering the onions again. I'm very leery about it. So I'll just keep an eye on it and maybe just hand water it. If I, I'll bring a moisture tester out and see what's up. This is the newest lettuce that's gonna go in the garden box. It's gorgeous. I had tin cans around my uh, peppers that I put out in the garden here when I first put them out because the wind was blowing so hard and they were looking so terrible. And I took the tin cans off and now they are really perking up. There's blooms all over them and they've got a nice green color. So I need to remember next year not to leave my cans on. I see I got some garlic scapes to take off still. So I'll do that. It's only been a few days since I filmed uh, this garden with the corn and the potatoes in it. And my poor corn, look at it. Getting its little tassel tops already. Aww. It's so short. <laughs> no, I'm not the corn grower in the family. That's my in-laws, that's for sure. Winter squash is really getting some size on it. It's good. Nat should have labeled the stuff out here. We got one super late guy. I don't think he's gonna turn into squashes because we don't have long enough of that shenanigans. So I am super disappointed. I'm gonna be pulling all our garlic today. I'll show you why in a second. And you see this giant bear patch in the onions? Uh, the onions are starting to rot. So it's a wet year problem that we haven't had to deal with for a long time. We've had beautiful onions. Let's go take a look at this uh, garlic. I'll show you what's going on. This stuff is some of the nicer stuff that I've pulled out that I have hanging here. You see it's separating. Ah, super disappointing. So I'm gonna salvage what I can. It wasn't what I was planning on today, I'll tell you that. Let's pull this one here. Yeah, oh, look at that. That is toast. That's what the onions were looking like, this kind of white rot. So I don't think that is, I'm not even gonna touch that. That's just pure soft yucky. I'm, I am gonna get it out of the garden though. The way garlic ripen up, it's normal for their tips to be a little bit brown like that. And I'm not a gardening expert horticulturist at all, but like when leaves start randomly dying and not say from the bottom up, pretty good sign that you should check your stuff. And also they, uh, they didn't just go brown in kind of a, just a brown way. Like this one here, I bet is also splitting because you see the way the leaves are. Well, let's pull it out. I mean, if it's, if it's good, then I did a bad, but no, see that? That's just, that just makes me mad. Nothing but problems with the garlic this year. The stuff that grew so beautifully and rotted, but that was the same moisture that gave us our gorgeous hay. So I am not complaining. I can buy garlic. <laughs> well, thanks for watching everybody. Just a quick little garden update for you here in zone three. We like maybe zone two for temperatures, but Alberta, Canada. Take care. Bye for now.